thank you all for coming today and for your interest in getting students into research. Uh, I know almost everybody here. My name is Steve Rodecker. I was in the district for 30 years and did some science fair at that point. And uh, back in about 1999, we started up this uh, science fair. We called it the science fair. The name has now changed and we'll be talking about that. And so we are very happy to see all of you here today, okay? <laughs> Please notice the name. We are no longer called a science and engineering fair. It is the STEMmer Fair. Science, technology, engineering, mathematics, research. And I'll just mention one little thing about this idea of research. I was talking about some people uh, at the, from the Navy the other day, and I did say, you know, yeah, we're the Greater San Diego Science and Engineering Fair, but we are also a STEM research fair. And that kind of went back a little bit. Research. Yes, that's what we are really trying to promote among our students, actual research. So not building volcanoes, not sending up model rockets, but doing the research. So let's take a look now at something you know I know of great interest here. This district now has an advantage in that we start in July in the Sweetwater District, and so you have an extra month or six weeks to get things started, okay? So between July and January of the following year, and it's pretty much the same as it has been now for 50 years here, uh, students work on their projects. They get their, their topics going, they work on their projects. I wanted to ask also, if you are not on our list, please notify me. I will get you the, what we call the nuts and bolts document, and that has all of the dates and times and activities that are going on there. So please make sure you get that document. In addition, we send out a sample notebook with sample letters to students, parents, uh, all kinds of other information about what a backboard looks like and so on. So please make sure you're on our email list so that you're getting all the documents as you need them here for the district, okay? I'll just mention, since I'm also um, the fair director of the Greater San Diego Science and Engineering Fair, just mention a couple of things about this. If you have had students go through before, um, there's a big change this year. This year we are going to be asking for a pre-approval process. So that information will be going out and we're hoping to have that done next week, okay? Screening is still gonna happen in January, okay, and into February. And that is the students coming from our fair, from the STEMmer Fair, the Sweetwater Union High School District STEMmer Fair, any and all of them are um, allowed to then apply to come in to sc through screening to the county science fair. So they are absolutely ready to do that, okay? Now we'll have some thoughts about timing on that, which are gonna be very different this year, so we really have to pay attention. Uh, screening deadlines, once again, very different. Typically, it has been done by site, as you know. Sweetwater District was one of the last ones to be screened, the ones who have been in this before. This year, we are changing to grade level screening, okay? And you can see the various uh, deadlines here, which are also out on the, uh, the, the uh, website, okay? This County Science Fair takes place on March the 11th of 2020 at the Balboa Park Activity Center. All this information, we'll have it up on, on the, the STEAM uh, website here so that you'll have it as well. Animal sciences, behavioral social sciences, biochemistry, chemistry. Please notice computer science. We are really out there trying to recruit computer science teachers. Okay, to get their students involved. Now I'm starting to get some inquiries now. Is it okay if my if students in my computer class do X, Y, Z, and then we look at it and we make sure, yes, it would be okay. Come on in to the Greater San Diego Science and Engineering Fair. Yes, there are special guidelines for computer science projects, mathematics projects, engineering projects. We know engineering projects are not science projects. Okay, uh, there's typically not gonna be a hypothesis. We want to see, does it work? And the example that I always give, I went to Hilltop High School many years ago. A student had built a device which folded paper. You know, the nice trifolds that you like to have. Put in a piece of paper, he had it set up with a drill. So he put in a drill, it cranked the machinery, and out was supposed to come a nice trifold. So I was there doing the screening, hit the button, did the, did the drill, and I get this crumpled little mass of paper. <laughs> needs another iteration or two, okay? Needs a little little more work. So, came back a week later, put the piece of paper in, hit the drill, perfect trifold piece of paper. So, off he went. He had built a device and it worked. 
Okay, so it, it wasn't like there was a hypothesis and, and all kinds of data. He built something, and it's the same with a computer program. If you are program, programming something and you hit the button, does all the programming work? Does it do what it's supposed to do? Versus a hypothesis, and then you have uh, your procedure and data and conclusions and so on. Now, some, some, some engineering projects will do that, okay? But for some engineer straight engineering projects, that's acceptable too, without that. All right, so uh, again, engineering. We are very interested in engineering, and there's three different types of engineering projects. There's electrical and mechanical, energy and transport, materials and bioengineering. So all kinds of engineering projects are available, environmental sciences, math, medicine, microbiology, physics, astronomy, plant. Uh, why do re research projects? Well, of course, we have Common Core and NGSS out there. Okay, and I would like to emphasize with NGSS and Science Fair, the goals are pretty much the same. For NGSS, students are supposed to be developing an idea. They're supposed to be writing a protocol. They're supposed to be testing that, that with that protocol, gathering data, forming their conclusions, sharing their, their information. All of these things, of course, are in NGSS. Well, that's all part of a STEM fair, STEM research fair experience as well, okay? So what is a STEM project? It's an application of science and engineering principles in the real world. So you can look and see here, let's see how we're doing time-wise, good. Uh, you can see with STEM projects in NGSS, on the left we have basically the project requirements. And here's NGSS, you can see they match very, very nicely here. <coughs> so in having students do, STEM research in your classrooms, okay? You are taking care of a, of a huge amount of what we would call NGSS and preparing them the best you can for NGSS. Same thing on the back end here, results, conclusions, abstracts. This is a big one, getting students to write good abstracts, always a wonderful skill, okay? And the oral defense also, very unique for STEM research fair projects. Students will be standing in front of those backboards over there, which I'll talk about here in a moment, and talking to judges who are knowledgeable in their fields, explaining what's in the project, and then they are judged accordingly. Okay, so now at our STEM research fair in the district, that's mostly you all. Some of you have already served as judges, you know what it's all about. It is a portfolio of everything a student knows. It has all of these different skills, technology, art, mathematics, writing, oral presentation, and of course some science or engineering in there as well. But this is what I always like to say, students get to do a project. You know, students come out, you've just assigned them the, the project. Like, oh, I've got to do this project. No, because they get to tell you what they want to do. It's based on their interest. And that's how you turn this around and make it a positive that they get to do a project that is of their interest, the teacher's not telling them. Ask any person who has been through a STEM research fair or STEM fair, any time in their lifetime, ask somebody my age or somebody who has just been through, what'd you do your project on? And they will be able to tell you instantly. It is a memory of a lifetime. They will always remember what they did for a project for their entire lives. It's one of those kind of educational experiences that really gets into the amygdala and some other parts of the brain and it sticks and it stays there their entire lives. What is the role of the teacher then? I'm gonna leave most of this, of course, up to our experts here in a moment, okay? Uh, projects can be required or optional. You'll hear about various different programs here, okay? Uh, in some honors level classes, they are required this is up to you as teachers. Uh, once again, introducing the project as a positive assignment that students get to do. And oftentimes it just comes down to something as, as easy as, you know, helping the students to uh, narrow their focus on their projects. Oftentimes they want to cure cancer and you have to get them to focus right in on, let's grow some cells and test some things on the cells. You know, uh, get them to the, re to the reality here. Okay, what is the effect of blank on blank? And you can fill in that blank. You establish due dates, you order materials, you inform parents and so on about what's happening in the classroom because they're a very big part of this as well. 
all of the students. They pick their projects. It has to be feasible, affordable, safe, interesting to him or her. Okay, they work on their projects. It can be at home, it can be at school, it can be in a lab. So there is no one designated place for these projects. Um, they have to meet all the deadlines. This is extremely important. And those who have successful programs, meeting all the benchmarks, meeting the deadlines for when things have to happen in their projects, very important. They produce a notebook and a backboard to present at the classroom, school, and district science fair. And we'll take a look at a notebook, and I'll bring your attention over here real fast. Come up over here. We have here, um, when you are ready here after the day, take a look. This is a notebook here that goes along with this backboard. It's ancient, but it has all of the, it has all of the uh, information in here. You can take a look. Notice it's not like 500 pages long. It's about 18 to 20 pages long, so it's not that big, but it has all of the information in there, okay? So this is a notebook. Oftentimes what you do with the notebook is you Xerox what's in here, and guess where it goes? Goes right on the backboard. So that information then goes on the backboard. We have a couple of different uh, examples for you to take a look at so you can see projects that were in, uh, this one was in our, our STEM fair, Okay, and went on to the Greater San Diego, and that was from the Greater San Diego right there. Backwards, same thing, okay? There is a statement of the problem, there is usually a hypothesis, the procedure, materials, all kinds of information showing the researcher doing his or her work in the middle with pictures and so on and descriptions, a, a summary of the results and conclusion, maybe significance. Those are the kinds of things that need to be on the backboard. Okay, in the nuts and bolts uh, document that I sent out here, okay, and we'll send out to everybody here, uh, if you don't have it, it gives you an exact kind of minute by minute what's happening at the, at, on the day of the fair. And pretty much uh, they arrive, they set up their projects, the judges start coming through, okay, and just a very general timeline between 12 and one students arrive. Starting at about 1.20 or so, the judges start. They will work with the, with the students until about 3.30 to 4. Then comes calculating all of the scores. That happens between 4 and 6. And the award ceremony happens between 6 and 7. And then the buses pick everybody up and off they go. So it's kind of a one day thing. The students use their notebooks and backwards as props. They explain to the judges and then comes the uh, awards. We give awards to every student first through fourth places, okay, and then we give out some sweepstakes projects as well, based upon the, the top uh, life science and physical science projects in the fair that year. And then all of these students are, if, if they wish, they can go on to the Greater San Diego Science and Engineering Fair, go through all the process of screening, hopefully be accepted. Practically all of our students are accepted that come from our STEM, because they've already been through your screening just to get there and that means that most of them, once they go on to the county, do well. And our students do very well. Are there any questions before we get to our experts here on, on what's happening? Yes, Kathy. Okay. Is that something I should be concerned about now, or is that handled? That, that will be handled, <laughs> yeah, by me. Okay. Uh, usually, kind of right around January the 20th or 25th, I will send out a document, and it will say, how many students do you think <laughs> you're going to have, right? And then we go back and forth, and let's say you say 15, then I plan on the bus picking up 15 of your students from your site. And then I set up all the bus routes accordingly, depending on numbers, how many will fit in a bus, and so on. Okay. So I will deal I with that. You my info and you you just give you my info. All you need is the info, and I will set it up Perfect. from my site. So I'm Michelle Mardall, and I've been doing Science Fair for 15 years, and all of Benita Vista High School. and. What got me interested in it is was a student. She said, science fair is my hobby. Will you be my advisor? And um, that's Sonia Kim. She came from Rancho Del Rey, which has a, an excellent um, science fair uh, middle school program. Um, so that's a good resource to look at, um, as well as you need to talk to <laughs> the other meta are You need to talk to other middle school science uh, teachers because they're really good at it. And um, so they came kind of, she came kind of trained and I'd like to say that Sonia right now, she won first place at, um, at district. She did it for three years in a row. 
Um, and then now she's at Harvard Med in an MD PhD program and she's still working on her PhD and she's my first science fair student. Okay, she was, I'll, I'll click for you this time. Okay. So the reason why I'm doing this click click okay. is here's a there's Sonia. Um, Ariana and Diego, I want to point these students out. Ariana just graduated from Brown and she was the only freshman to get to do a uh, research project in a neuroscience class because of the basis of her science fair projects. She got filmed, filmed by National Geographic at our, uh, the, uh, the county one. And imagine having your, um, you know, your college personal statement and saying, I got filmed by National Geographic. It looked really good for her. Diego is at USC. Um, he's finished too. He was doing CRISPR at USC and it all started here at, um, start first doing it. Now Victor just graduated. He was doing lab. Melita Heck. Um, uh, Lady is still doing all these students. There's next one, if next slide. All these students are doing undergrad research and they're using their science fair um, experience to get them into these labs and I write a lot of re letters of rec as a senior teacher and one of the nice things is that if you they do science fair with you you have something that you can say that's a paragraph about their troubles shooting their originality their ability to communicate that would go beyond what you can do in a classroom when you have 32 kids or 40 in your classrooms so and it adds some um, inquiry is a stem goal and that's what we want to do next slide I only get to talk for four minutes. Um, so we um, t at um, Benita, we're an international baccalaureate. We're um, required to do um, their own projects and beginning. It does have some cons. Students need more time. It's hard when you have 32 kids in a classroom to have them do uh, 32 different projects simultaneously. I've done it. It's hard, but you can do it. Equipment is always ghetto fabulous and whatever's cheapest that's what we do you can do cheap science and you can do good uh science but i think the pros outweigh it they're engaged they um problem solving they use critical thinking they have to come up with improvements and they have to be able to explain it next slide so um what I do is um, I start talking to the kids about science in the beginning of the year in my IB class. They're definitely going to do it. Um, my freshmen, I take a little longer. They, at the end of the year project, their final, this is their final. They have to do a science fair so they get the experience in ninth grade. And then they can, um, when I have them in second year for AP or IB, that's um, part of the, the IB It's required in the class to do it. And the next one. Um, so um, I, I make it open-ended. I did have some kids, you just have to say, I, I'm sorry, I don't have the, we cannot do that experiment. Sorry, Isaac Brody, we cannot do that experiment. <laughs> I do not have the money and the time to see if uh, uh, radiation will cause evolution change in bacteria. So you have to like, uh, you have to tell them that you can't do everything. Um, I give a little extra credit if they go to science fair. I tell them at the beginning of the year. Um, and then AP has definitely um, got inquiry components now more than ever, so it's really good if you do that. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. we have an emphasis on hypothesis-based science. You need it in, in the biological science. You need to have a reason, not just, oh, let's see what happens if. That's always a bad science project if you're, if you're just like trying, stumbling around and doing stuff. It should be, you have to repeat it three or four three to five times and get repeatable data. So you can do statistical analysis. And the judges ask about statistics. They say, do you, what, do you have an average there? Do you have a standard deviation? And they like it if you see it. And there is, oh, one thing I want to tell you is at county, there is cash awards. Yes. 100 bucks, 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. One uh, student got $3,000 and she went to UCLA. Um, and then another one, well, Isaac got the sweepstakes last two years ago, and he got like, I think $2,000 and they went to state and won five. He, he got fifth in, uh, at state and he won some more money. And one thing about, um, I'm writing his letter of recommendation and he, he's, he, he proclaims that he, is, he wants to show that he, he can do stuff 
and be um, emitted by what his experience is rather than just an SAT test. And it's really important to him and he has the, he has the wherewithal to back it up. Um, next slide. Thanks. Okay, so I give them handouts, I give them expectations. In Accelerated, we spend, if you're in an introductory class, you spend a lot of time getting them prepared and how to do that, you give them um, rubrics. But anybody who wants to go, can go. Uh, in the high school, nobody wants to go to high school science fair, so there's not that much competition. In middle school, it's a lot of competition. So um, if you, anybody who is a high school, I highly, uh, I really encourage you to do so and it looks great on college apps. Whereas middle school, you don't get to talk about your middle school experience because they don't care. It's all about your high school experience. So that's one way to differentiate yourself. Next slide. Okay, and then, oh, that was backwards. <laughs> okay, so this is just what I give them for planning. Um, I tell them to go to this website. This is your website everybody should go to, the Greater San Diego um, Engineering Fair. It has a sample um, uh, notebook. They just give me a topic. They need to research about 10 uh, sources. And this is really tricky. Get that parent permission slip right away. And then they need to tell me what materials, what they can bring, what I can bring, what is going to be measured, and how they're going to set up their control. And then everything else changes from them. So I, is that my time? Okay, keep going. So that's my little science fair. And then when I have them write it up, um, they have a purpose their abstract, their background, a hypothesis, the procedure with materials and methods, and then I have a table of variable. It's nice because uh, it helps them understand what is independent, dependent, and control. And I explain how and why is it kept the same, rather than just saying, oh, I just had the same light. I want to know why is light important for plants, and why? Sh how do we keep it the same? The next one. And then um, the results, we have qualitative results, quantitative results, and then it has to be transformed, meaning um, it has to do some calculation involved. There's gotta be a graph, and I always want error bars. If it's my IB students, we do a t-test or chi-squared. Um, if, it's, if it's just uh, the accelerated, I'll be happy if, um, to teach them standard deviation. And then we have conclusions, next slide. And um, so, let's see, so what you have to do is make sure that they get all the forms done and you have to make sure that the experiment is within um, the rules. You have to, if there's bacterial work, you need special permission slips and you have to get that signed and um, certifications. Uh, the other thing um, that you guys also need to consider if they're off, um, in another place, you also need to have um, permission to do that. So a few people, I know um, somebody from Olympian did extensive work at UCSD, and then you have to have their um, permission slip to, to show their work. Um, because they are, they may be working in a lab when they, and if they're in a lab where there's a PI and there's certain funds, you have to get permission to be able to show that work. And usually it's not a problem, but you need their permission slip, so. Mostly what you're doing is getting permission slips and trying to find them uh, materials. And Janice Acosa Carl from Chula Vista Middle School. And between the two of these two, that we provide a huge number of projects, quality projects for us every year for the STEM fair. So, yeah. Okay, one more time with feelings. I'm Gina <laughs> Claus Guerrero. I teach um, seventh and eighth grade science at Chula Vista Middle School, my partner girl. Um, if you want to follow along, um, if you go to Jot once and type in science, um, you can retrieve kind of visual. So at Chula Vista Middle School, sci science fair is required for accelerated. We have a contract. We have a very detailed contract, and it says these are the requirements that you need to do to be an accelerated. And if you don't, that if you do not do the science fair, you will fail. And that's the rule. You will fail, and they have to sign it. And if they have a problem, then they don't come to accelerate it. But, every, but we start the children in seventh grade. We have, Tina has this one, started this program long when she's, she came, into, uh, came, came to Chula Vista Middle School, that we have um, invention for seventh grade. We have 
a showcase, invention showcase for seventh grade. That is their practice to go to eighth grade accelerated science for the science fair. Some of our kids, their invention, or when they were in seventh grade, they continued it to become their eighth grade science fair project. So that was a good deal for us. So our kids know that they have to do science fair. And the way we do it easier is that we cut the time frame that the first six weeks you will have your problem, your background information, your, your um, hypothesis, your material, and your procedure. And you have to get a permission. So we have a science fair writing class. Like this semester, I started the first three Saturdays of the school year, the very beginning of the school year, we had a science fair writing class where the kids come in and then everybody's given a science fair notebook and they fill it in and they have all their ideas, they write it down and they line up and then they line up and I approve and I said, nope, we can't do this, go back. Next one, go back. And they tell me, my brain hurts, it's okay, it'll be easy. By the end of the three weeks, they're done. They're ready. So when the six weeks of the grading period comes in, the fifth week of the second, the first grading period, they already have a typewritten with everything that they need. They have their questions, they have their purpose, they have their hypothesis, they have their materials, they have their procedure, typewritten. And then we give them the grades, then they start, they have permission to, if we have a problem with the procedures, then we have to talk about it. Then the next, before the break, which is the second six weeks, is that when they're doing the lab. And then when they do the lab, then we talked about everything else that they need. Um, they have to know what are all the variables that they, what is your control variable, what's your experimental variable, they need to know that. Um, right now, my, my children, I have 32, I have 30 kids, and they all have their projects. Some of them are getting ready to do the bacterial work. They are doing their, um, their testing during the 10 weeks, and then there are kids who are testing, and it takes about three months to do the result. I have a kid who's doing something about plastic right now, and so he has tested, and so he had to have like three months, so that by the time January comes, he has everything the detailed. And then in January, the second semester, is we just, we have our own science fair at school, the Chula Vista Science Fair, and then we have this. They vote, all the science children go to the library or the multi-purpose room, and they vote. And then the top 15 of each class, we have three, the top 15, then they go to the district. Then everybody who goes to the district, then they work on, and then they submit their, their project to the county. Last year we have, we, we took 25 to the district and 20 of them went to the county. Um, we won the first, uh, my kid got the sweepstake for physical and she, did, oh, life science and Tina did the, kids did the physical, um, what else? One of my children, my very first year, this is my eighth year of going to do science fair. The very first year I got thrown into it because Jennifer Fee had a baby and she had to leave. And then <laughs> my first baby won first place for biology, life science, and she won um, an award from the California Water Authority. And she had some money, she had $300, and then they had this good, beautiful luncheon with her. And then this year, one of my babies had an, the first place award for, um, she was doing desalination. And then the Army engineers gave her a special award, and they have a luncheon, and then she, she talked to all the um, scientists from the Navy, they did the presentation at the Liberty Station, and she had to present her project with the scientists. Then. Um, she's at Chula Vista now. And she's continuing her project for the science fair, for the high school, so that was good. So I, it's good for them because the kids who went and participated in the science fair, they have so much self-confidence. Is that my time done? And so much self-confidence, and so it's more than a test, it's a lifetime lesson. So I'm just gonna add on to what Gina said. Um, 
You know, when they did a survey of the skills that people need in the workforce, everything is kind of incorporated into science fair. Um, it's just a great learning experience. You know, it's renowned across like the world, like just saying that you participate in science fair, I guess for high school, prepare them for it. And it just teaches them to be kind of meticulous with like their note taking, their data collection, everything else that's kind of needed for science. Um, it's great for to meet everyone throughout the district and kind of be inspired by other kids' projects. Um, yeah, they'll introduce them. Uh, one of my first kids, uh, they did pH levels all over uh, of water all over San Diego and was recognized by San Diego Science and got to wear an award. Uh, yeah, going to the county is awesome. Yeah, Gina and I, we won both sweepstakes last year for life science and physical science. Um, and yes, like we said, we require it. If you don't require it, it's going to be hard. And so we do put it in our contract. We have Details. teachers and we have students <laughs> and parents sign saying that they know that it's required. And if they don't do it, they're going to fail. So then, like, you know, it's kind of like solid. So then when they're like, oh, why am I getting F? Like, well, according to the contract that you signed in the syllabus, this, and this is for accelerated, which we can require. Um, like Gina said, timeline is important. I surveyed the students too and said, um, you know, what can I do to help you? Um, this is my kind of second, third year doing it. And a lot of them say chunking and deadlines. Because mm -hmm. one time I said, okay, you have to do the abstract, the um, review of literature and the procedures, all of that by like two months later. And they're like, we don't like that. We'd rather you say, do, have the abstract due this week. And if you chunk it, then it makes it easier for them. Um, like Gina mentioned, like it's an entire process where we first narrow down like the question. Um, you want to give them hard like uh, nose because they'll be like, can we do it on people? Can we do it on dogs, plants? And like, no, like, you know, it's going to drive you crazy. Like, can you get like 50 waivers of like people and like parents? And no. So sometimes it'll hurt their feelings, but you have to be like, no, I don't want you to go through that. So I'm not going to approve it. Um, and we have like, you know, we use Canvas to put resources on there so they know where to go to for samples. Um, we use discussions where they can post their question on there and you get feedback and then they can see other people's ideas so it's kind of collaborative in that sense. Um, we do project proposal where they present us their ideas and you know if it's qualitative, quantitative, can you measure it, can you test it, um, you know building up to finally approving it, um, the setup so they know how to set up and how to do the variables. And um, yeah, it's like a full-on report that they're gonna do. And if you click on the link, it'll show you kind of the procedures. We tried to make it look as like close to college level as possible. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty much it. It's a great project. Um, I think the reason why Gina and I always win, like very, like our kids always score first place in our district is because we're very strict about data points. So we say that it's a minimum of 50. Like you have to get 50 data points no matter what. And then I said, you know, if you really want to go to county and like the district, 100 or more, the more the better, because the more impressive it'll look like, you know, you know it's like the difference is saying I surveyed 10 people versus I surveyed 100 or 1,000. So we always tell them that 50 is required beyond that. And really for the county and the district, it's like you don't want to be like dragging them to do the work. So it's kind of like if you want to go for the stars, like tell me and I will tell you exactly what you need to do and how many data points to get to reach there. Because it's, it's really annoying when you try to get them to apply to the county and they just don't want to do the work. And it's just like, why am I applying for you? Anyway, um, but if they're willing to go for the goal, then like just help them on their way. Other than that, it's just, yeah. But it's a great experience and it's nice to see the kids shine, even though they're going to be, they need you to require them to have the deadlines and everything. One more thing with our babies is that our high school kids who won awards from the district and the counties, they come. Like when I have my Saturday schools, I have tutors and, oh, sorry. My, my kids who won awards from last year, they came the three Saturdays and they taught them, this is what you expect, this is what they're gonna ask you, this is what you need to have. You can't have, I wanna know what this effect of color is like, no one cares. You can't calculate that. And I have a kid, and at the end of the Saturdays, the four hours, they cry. Honest to goodness, they'll be crying. It's like, it's okay. We're gonna pass through this. And he said, I cried last year too, it's okay. It was so cute. <laughs> but then at the end, they were successful, so that was easy. The key is, you need to be organized. Oh, and also, Leo, we get, we get gold medals. Because what we do is that, Everybody who are in accelerated have to be in the Chula Vista Middle School 
science fair. They have to. So then we have 100. And what we've been doing is that, because we have limited budget, we use the old board. And that's what we give to the Chula Vista Middle School science fair. And then after the one who wins for the, to, look, to go to the district, they get the new board. And then those new board that we took to the district now becomes the next yes. board for the Chula Vista Middle School. So you save. When we glue, can I give you tips for gluing? Because it's easier to undo. If you do four points, the next year you just take four points and then they can use it. The next kids will use it. By so way, you have online. a clean board. It's online as well, so yeah. You get it online. So that's that's good. That's it. So thank you so much to our teacher experts here. You heard, you heard, ladies and gentlemen, the accumulated wisdom here uh, of uh, probably 30 years speaking. You know, much better than than I could ever represent that because they are out there. They are doing this. They have done this for many years, and they are still sane and still doing it. So, you know, thank you. Thank you <laughs> I so know much. It's fun. I'll, I'll just mention a couple of things. Uh, something that Michelle was talking about, the letters of recommendation, certainly for high school. Uh, my students, when they were doing science fairs back in the 90s and into the early aughts and so on, if they wanted to go to an elite university, and I could write on there, you know, they did a science fair project. That was the distinguisher. The elite universities want to know, what distinguishes this student from every other 4.63 GPA kid who has taken a dozen AP classes and has fives on all of the scores? So what distinguishes them? The science, science and engineering project really distinguishes them. Something that Gina uh, mentioned also, and that is, you know, she comes in on a Saturday to take care of some of these things, okay? A thought here that some teachers at some schools do as well is uh, if you have an English component, the, the background uh, paper that students have to write, okay, get the English teacher involved at your site if you can. If you're going to be doing statistics, which are bigger and bigger now and what we look for, get the math teacher involved. Try to give them so that it's not all on you, that you work with other teachers to try to take a piece and a part of this thing. So it's not uh, computer science teachers also can work with English teachers and whoever to make sure that everything is done in a timely fashion. It's not just you. So, you know, that's the kind of thing. So for all of you that are new to this process, you know, any questions, issues, whatever, you know, please talk to myself or Leo or one of our expert teachers here. There's a huge amount of experience, successful experience out there with Science Fair so that you can do this. As, as you heard, there is no one way of doing this. It can be done in class. It can be done as a Saturday club. Uh, it can be done as part of a requirement in an upper level. However you choose to do this, and whether you get 50 projects or you have five, that's okay. I mean, there, there's, there's nobody judging anybody based on the number.